Hey everyone, I don't typically like to start the week's lecture on a virtual day, but with yesterday's sort of audible where we went through the events um, in the Capitol on Wednesday, um, I don't really have a lot of choice. So hopefully you watched closely to the crash course videos that I assigned and you are entering the lecture um, with a foundation of understanding. But this particular chapter, chapter 10, is largely focusing on um, on Europe, right? A place that we really haven't been for a while, having focused much more in China and the Middle East um, and even South America. And so we want to take a look at um, Western and Eastern Europe in the time after the Roman Empire. Um, and so today we're going to look at the Byzantines. So the first question here is um, kind of what happened in European society, specifically socially or culturally, rather, um, in the time period after the collapse of Rome, a specific focus on Christianity. What happened to Christianity after the collapse of Rome? And what we see um, historically is that when the great power of Rome oh, fell um, in 476 CE, um, that great unifier of of European society was gone. And so suddenly this, this empire that held all of Eastern and Western Europe together as one went away. And in its place arose literally hundreds of little kingdoms and princedoms and, and, and fiefdoms and whatnot, like little itty bitty states. Um, and so Christianity really became the only common ground for post-classical um, European societies, right? Like it was the almost like the new Rome, not in an imperial way or a powerful way, but it definitely bound people together. Um, but the problem with it is, is that early Christianity, um, which was, you know, coming straight out of just the Old and the New Testament, really hadn't developed into what we think of Christianity today, right? When we think of, you know, Baptists and Lutherans and Presbyterians and Episcopalians and Evangelicals and all that kind of thing. Like that hadn't happened. It was just a single Christian church um, based in Rome. But when Rome collapsed, what followed was a pretty deep divide that emerged in Christianity um, that separated Western Europe um, under control of the Catholic Church, which emerged, and the Eastern, in Eastern Europe, which um, came to be ruled under what was considered to be the Orthodox Church at the time. They were both Christians, um, but different conditions or traditions and different beliefs, and we're going to look at that in, in later slides. And so the Eastern European Empire, on the map below, it's the purple, um, basically carried forward Roman imperial traditions, a lot of the same Roman cultural ideas. Um, and, and really, John Green, as a result, makes the argument in the video you watched, hopefully yesterday, um, that the Roman Empire didn't really fall in 476. It just moved east and renamed itself to the Byzantines. But what we see is that the Byzantines in the east continued Roman traditions, whereas Western Europe tried to hang on to the Roman Empire, um, but failed pretty strongly, and, and so descended into what we consider to be the Dark Ages, right, where the Roman imperial order disintegrated in the West, and, you know, hundreds of itty-bitty states emerged, um, where in the East, the Roman imperial conditions continued under the Byzantine Empire. So how did Western European and, and Byzantine society differ? Remember, Byzantine is Eastern European. And the short answer is, is we're going to look at it from a religious standpoint, right? Western Europe was um, the Catholic Church. Western Europe is Catholic, right? And we can think about that pretty easily because, you know, Spain is Catholic and Spain brought Catholicism into um you know, Latin America and Mexico and, and France is Catholic and England was Catholic for most of the, the time at that point. And, and Portugal and Western Europe was Catholic, right? And the Catholic Church had for a while at that point um, established independence um, from political authorities, meaning um, that the Catholic Church was ruled by the Pope, um, not the emperor in Rome. 
right? They had separated, uh, separation of church and state, if you will. Whereas Eastern Christianity and, and the Christianity Christian church that really kind of coalesced and, and morphed in, in the East became known as the Eastern Orthodox Church, right? Also Christian, also centered around the Bible, same belief in Jesus, same belief in God, but different um, interpretations of those texts and different traditions. And so this is the Eastern Orthodox Church, and this is the Byzantines. Now, this is important because the Eastern Orthodox Church, unlike the Catholic Church, had no separation between church and state. The Eastern Orthodox Church was under the authority of the Byzantine Emperor. The Byzantine Emperor was the head of the church, whereas the um, the Emperor in Rome was never the head of the Catholic Church. That was the Pope, right? And so there's this separation. Another big difference between Western Europe and Byzantine society is, is following the collapse of the Western Roman Empire, um, Western Europe really kind of devolved into a very rural and small town-based society, right? Very farming-oriented, village-oriented. Western Europe was more rural, whereas the Eastern European Empire was much more urbanized and wealthier, right? And so when the European or when the um, Roman Empire collapsed in the West and, and Western Europe was plunged into this dark age period that John Green challenges, um, but there's some validity, for about the next 600 years, from about 476 to right around 1100, um, Western Europe had a pretty slow period of population growth. Um, disease, a lot of violence and bloodshed because there were so many hundreds of different you know, kingdoms competing and fighting each other. Um, and it was a very chaotic experience, right? There was no Roman Empire to keep people in check. There was no Roman Empire to keep people afraid. There was no Roman Empire to provide order. And so what followed was a very like disorganized, fragmented, uh, chaotic society. Um, and then around 1000 CE, civilization began emerging at a faster pace, right? Centered again in Italy. Um, and we're going to look at that in the Renaissance in, in chapters to come. Now, in 500 CE, just about 25 years after the fall of Rome, um, we need to talk, uh, put in context, Christianity in context, right? By 500 CE, um, Christianity really wasn't a European religion, right? Only about one third of all Christians in the world lived in Europe. Two thirds of them would have lived in the Middle East um, and or Africa, right? We, we saw Ethiopia and, and Egypt down through the Nile River Valley um, and the Middle East and even into India were bigger Christian communities than existed in Europe. Um, and, you know, what, what emerged in these, these non-European Christian areas um, were distinct forms of Christianity, right? Kind of like we, again, talk about how everyone's Christian under the umbrella of Christianity, but, you know, Baptists consider themselves different from Lutherans, which consider themselves different from Presbyterians, which, you know, consider themselves different from Pentecostals. These are all forms of Christianity, and these other Afro-Eurasian regions, like the um, Coptic Christianity that emerged in Africa and the Middle East, um, and so, you know, just some graphics, you can sort of see the Roman and tradition in, in the architecture or, or I'm sorry, the art style, artistic style. Um, so now let's take a look at the political side of our spice chart. How did the Byzantine Empire begin? And as you saw in John Green's video, right, it is very questionable when the Byzantine Empire began. When did the Roman Empire end? in the Byzantine Empire begin, right? And and there really isn't an answer to that because there isn't a clear starting point. There's no, you know, day in history where it's like, well, the Roman Empire is gone and nope, boop, now we have a Byzantine Empire. Many people as a result would argue that when Emperor Constantine founded the city of Constantinople and moved the capital of the Roman Empire to the east, that when Western Roman Empire fell, the Roman Empire really continued. Um, it was just a continuation of the Roman Empire, right? That the Byzantine Empire was basically the Roman Empire under a different name located a couple hundred miles to the east. 
And so, you know, some historians might say there's an overlap period, right? If the Roman Empire fell in 476, some people might say that the Byzantine Empire really began in 330 CE when Emperor Constantine in Rome founded the city of Constantinople, right? And so this gets at a really interesting part in history called histor or historicization or periodization, which is dates are always pretty fluid, right? When did one thing like end and one other thing begin? Now, we do know that the Roman Empire formally divided itself into Eastern and Western halves to make it easier to rule in the late fourth century. So like 375 CE, the Roman Empire in Rome said, you know what, we're getting a little weaker. We're not able to control this territory quite as well as we used to be. Our, our legions are kind of decaying. What if we split the Roman Empire in two and then we can have like leaders in each half that rule it. Um, and so it's less land to rule, right? It's easier to communicate. Um, now, we do know that the western half of the Roman Empire collapsed in the 5th century with the invasion of the Visigoths. Um, but the eastern half survived another thousand years. And so if you truly say that the Byzantine Empire is just the Roman Empire, then the Byzantine or the Roman Empire would have been in power for almost 1,500 years, making it hands down the longest empire in human history. Now, if you say that the Roman Empire fell in 476 and the Byzantine Empire started then, then the Byzantine is, is only a thousand years old only. Now, the reason why the empire, the Eastern Empire, lasted so much longer is going to be explored on the, the next slide. But if you look at the civilizations that this Eastern Empire contained, right, the Eastern half of the Roman Empire, the Byzantines, contained the lands of Egypt and Greece and Syria and, and the um, lands of Anatolia. And these were all enormously wealthy lands. Um, this painting in the top left is famously a picture of um, Constantine, the Roman Empire, talking with builders about where he wanted to place his new city that he was founding and naming after himself. Um, and you can see that that uh, creature up in the sky was is almost like God, uh, an act of God kind of telling him it should be here. And this bottom right map is all the different areas and locations that Constantine really considered for where he was going to put Constantinople. Now, where did he end up going with? He went with that one in the middle, right, where, where Istanbul slash Constantinople is. So why were the Byzantines successful when the Western Roman, when the Western Rome failed? Why did they last another thousand years even after Western Roman society fell in 476? And the short answer is money right? Like they were much, much richer and they had far greater resources and were able to use those resources to support bigger armies and bigger cities and more successful civilization. Um, they were more or urbanized as well, which is a little bit of a chicken or the egg scenario. Were they more urbanized because they are wealthier or were they wealthier because they were more urbanized? But either way, they had bigger cities and people were largely based in them. Also, the capital of Constantinople was much easier to defend than the city of Rome, right? It was backed up against mountains behind it with water in front, um, and it was protected from invasion from the west pretty strongly by that mountain range that it backed up against. Um, and as a result, it had never fallen ever. The walls of Constantinople had never fallen until the Ottoman Turks um, about a thousand years later in 1453. Um, it also had a far shorter frontier to defend. One of Rome's big failings was that it was stretched so long and so its border between it and the bad guys um, was much longer and you had to spread your legions and forces over a much greater length. This made it harder to defend. The Byzantine Empire had a shorter frontier which was easier to defend. Another issue was um, working in the Byzantines' favor is that the choice of putting Constantinople where it was put it right on the access point of the Black Sea 
um, right at a chokehold um, into the Mediterranean. And so its location allowed it to command not just the Eastern Mediterranean with its navies, but also turned the Black Sea, which connected it to Russia or the lands of the Russians, um, into a Byzantine bathtub. We're going to pick up in part two here in a second.